directives. So essentially Angular provides a three types of directives which comes with the Angular core and those are component directive. Component directives are there with uh, every component and uh, it has uh, some uh, you know metadata properties that you can specify. This is just a default directive that comes with uh, whenever you create a new component you will never feel a need that you need to do a customization into it but it is good to know from the interview perspective many a times the question is asked about it so it's good to know that component directive is a type of directive then uh, we have a structural directive structural are the directives which help you to alter the structure of your dom tree so it can help you in in setting a new elements or deleting the existing element and what are those so star ng4 ng switch ngf these are the common example and the most popular example of the structural directive then comes attribute directive so attribute directives are characterized by its ability to change the appearance or the behavior of the dom so adding a classes to a any tag any element on the fly adding a style to it or adding a data binding a data to any element those are the cases of attribute directive let's see what angular documentation talks about the directives and here we can say that the component directive is used with a template this type of directive is the most common directive type let's open the component overview and there you can see it's nothing new but the concept that we are familiar with it's a add the red component decorator so as we know that whenever you have to convert any class into a component we add some metadata to it so the selector tag uh selector sorry selector which basically tells what is the name of the custom tag through which we can refer this component then the template url if we have a separate html file maintained for it that you we can specify here then the style urls if we have multiple style sheet files for it that you can specify so these things are nothing but the component directive so the selector that we use the comp template url style url these are the component directives let's see the built-in directives so ng class it helps you to add the classes and set the css for the classes ng style it helps you to add the styles to element and then we have a ng model through which we can achieve a two-way binding so let's see how is the syntax so for ng class we just specify the two square brackets and inside that we can uh, write an expression depending on uh, expression evaluation if it returns true or false like in this example uh, they have used a ternary operator and they are adding a class to it so we can add the classes uh, on the go that's the one thing we can do and if you have a class uh, uh, like the values of a class assigned to some variable you can directly pass that value here in the double quotes in the ng class and it will apply the class to it yeah so this is a good example like current classes is so current classes is a object where it has been assigned to a ng class and uh, then you can see inside that object the savable modified special these are the class names and if these classes are active or not that are defined by this flag so if the scan save is unchanged especially if those flags are true then these classes will be applied so this is a good example if you want to apply the classes to elements on the go or at a dynamic dynamically at a runtime this is how you can do it with the ng class then comes uh, ng style with the ng style you can apply the styles the beauty of the ng style is that you can refer the css rules in your ts file so you can see that a font style font weight font size these are the things uh, which are the css rules and uh, those are defined under this offset as the current style and depending on some condition like if there is some value if a can save is enabled then you have to make the value uh, have to set the you have to set the font style as italic or else it will be normal font weight it can be bold or not all. so these are the ternary operators in this example they have used but there is no limit what it needs ng style it needs an object where you have the css rule defined in the key value pair and the key stands for your css rule and the value stand for whether what is the value that is there for example so font style accepts the string values of the font names font style accepts a font name font weight accepts a, either a unit or a values like normal bold font size it expects a numeric value and with a unit this is how you can refer the offset of the css that you wrote in your template 
ng model is a very popular one and it is mostly used in our farms and it's very popular because of its use case to bind the uh, elements to bind the input fields of a form with a variable so through this ng model we achieve a two-way binding and uh, that's why the syntax is this two operators we have it's a event plus it's a attribute type of directive so you can see that uh, if we assign this ng model in the input tag then it allows us to assign some variables uh, value variables data to that particular html element and in order to use this ng model you need to import a forms module into your uh into your model here it's just a simple app model but uh, whatever model you have created in your application you need to import forms module and uh, make an entry into a imports array the syntax is special here for the ng model as you can see that it's a both type of property binding and the event binding event binding we specify with a parenthesis round brackets and the property binding is with the square bracket so here we are doing both because we want to assign a values and on some event we also want to pass that value back to a, a listener back to some method so that's why the syntax is special and this is also known as a two-way binding in angular so as you can see in this example if you are typing some value on input tag it is being uh referred in other elements and that's where you can see that it is reflecting immediately on other elements so let's see one good example of this uh directive so this is attribute directive we are using here in this example and uh, what i'm trying to do here is i will allow user to select this radio buttons and whatever value is selected that value uh, for the color that color i want to make as a background color for the Contain below so if i click on the cyan and go here i can see that highlight me and these two sentences have the cyan color if i click on the yellow then i can see that the value uh, of the background color is yellow now and it's highlighted in the yellow similar for the green so this is the thing i want to achieve and uh, we'll do this with a directive so first thing first we have created this radio buttons group and uh, there is a value that uh, we are referring as a colors and uh, if the value if the user clicks on any of it then we are defining value so for green if user clicks on it will on the click event will assign a light green value to this color variable and the same variable then we later on passing to a special thing here which is a property binding app highlight now where is this highlight is coming from and where we have defined so this is coming from our directive so you can see that there is a file highlight dot directive ts and there if i go there you can find the selector i have specified that a square bracket and inside that highlight if so this means if there is a, a square bracket app highlight present for any html tag the control will reach here and the angular will look for the behavior how the behavior is specified in this class and it will apply that behavior to that particular html element one more important thing to remember that whenever we create any directive we need to declare that directive under the module so if you don't declare them or uh, directive it will not be recognizable in your component and it will give you a compile time error so it's similar like your components as you declare the components you also have to declare the directives so what's happening here we are reading the value of a color variable through this radio boxes and then that same value is passed to this app highlight directive and in the app highlight directive what we did is we are listening to a default color which is input uh, type of a uh, variable here app highlight and then that highlight color whatever value is being received that we are assigning to as a background color now how we are doing that we also want to listen a event and whenever you want to listen to an event on a html element we use a special type of decorator which is method type of decorator which is host listener so with the at the right host listener we are specifying the event name which is mouse enter and when mouse enters on that html element we are going to a highlight and there with the native element object we are selecting a style and applying a background color to whatever color that we have received through an at the right input type of variable so this is how it working since we wanted to have a event listener we wanted to you know uh, 
keep in track on when the event will happen and then only we wanted to apply this behavior that's why the host listener is here in the picture else it is not compulsory you can just write and direct you you can listen uh, without a listening values you can also you can still uh, put the customization of the behavior like getting this property uh, like reading this property and uh, then maybe using this property for something else or maybe adding it to maybe like this is a data that it received and then rendering that data into a directive you can see that we can also pass values like this as i have passed here like a value i put a constant yellow irrespective of whatever value chosen the highlighted color will always be yellow and in this case the highlighted color will always be orange there's a slight difference as you can see that here the app highlight this is the property binding i did but this is not a property binding as you know property binding is uh characterized by uh, this square brackets part here i have used this as a directive app highlight and i have assigned value as orange so this when you will use a property binding the same thing we are achieving in the both scenarios but rather it would go through this host listener and uh, there is a default color and that default color if you have passed something value it acts as a, like uh, listening to that default color.